This is the intro for the TV show Eyewitness, based on the Dolan Kinsley imprint of the same name. Don't you just wish you could explore this amazing museum? Well, you sort of could pretend you were with the Eyewitness Virtual Reality CD-ROMs. It was hard to find any virtual discs, so I went out and bought real ones. Anyway, let's start off with Bird. Now, look at that rainbow shine. Isn't that just aesthetic? Alright, so go back to DK Multimedia and where was it? Aha! Bird! Look at all those parrots! That intro. So, here is the Virtual Bird Museum. Let's have a look around. There are various topics on different sort of birds. There are statues. There are pictures. You can examine different areas. And there are even some videos. Let's look at this. With his tail feathers fanned, a male capercaillie challenges any rivals while a female looks on. Male capercaillies fight to control a courtship arena to give them the best chance to mate. Although the fight looks violent, injuries are rare, and the fight will stop as soon as one bird admits defeat and flies away. How isn't that fascinating? There's more than just birds here, there's also things inspired by birds. Anyway, let's have a look up here. Oh, bird watching. Hmm. In a few habitats, such as lakes and mountains, Birds can be so far away that not even binoculars make them clear. So the only way to see birds like this kite harassing its prey is to use a telescope. Telescopes magnify more than most binoculars, but they have a small field of view and are more sensitive to shakes, so it is important to rest them on something solid, like a tripod or car. Hmm. As for binoculars... Using a good pair of binoculars will help you to watch birds in most habitats without getting so close that you disturb them. Good birding binoculars magnify between 7 and 10 times and are ideal for watching birds like great tits and blue tits feeding at a backyard table. <laughs> Some binoculars magnify more than this, but they usually have a small field of view, which means that you see less of the scene in front of you, making birds harder to spot and more difficult to follow. So oh, there you go. Both tools have their badges and disadvantages. Wait, let the bird's eye view. 
A vulture uses its eyesight to spot food from great distances as it circles high above the ground. In each eye, the central part of the retina, the screen where the light is focused, is packed with light-sensitive cells. These cells give the eye extremely high resolution, which means that it can detect very small objects. The vulture's eyes also have overlapping fields of view, which allow the bird to judge distances accurately. I was cut prematurely. What about what duck sees? A duck uses its vision as an early warning system. Its eyes point sideways, allowing it to see almost all around without moving its head. Its vision is not particularly keen, but it is good at noticing anything that moves, even if it approaches from behind. The duck's forward vision is not nearly as sharp as the vulture's, but because it finds its food largely by touch, this does not matter. Now that... just weird. Wait, what? There are also activity and stuff. Hmm, let's see. The Avery... That's the anchor. Not ready to go quite yet. Oh, the museum store! That's fascinating. The sounds you can d download, images, wallpaper, stationery you could print out. Eh? I think it's frozen. And I guess a hard restart. I have to use a hard restart. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but... Mm. Okay, anyway... Fact... No! Why? Why should I bother doing this? There are tour guides that... Show you things. Alright. Okay, well, I'll let the software introduce itself for it. Welcome to the Eyewitness Virtual Reality Bird Museum. Welcome to the world of the Masters of Flight. Here, through the words and pictures, videos, animations, and sounds contained in the exhibits around you, the fascinating and extraordinary world of birds will unfold before you. Move through the museum's three rooms, gallery, corridors, and halls with a simple click of your mouse. Nah. I'll do it myself. Anyway. Anatomy room. Aha! Uh -huh. Here's some more interesting stuff I was looking for. Right, you can strip down. But hmm? right, what else do we have here? Oh. Hmm. Aha! Find out how birds use their beak, like tools. First step out, then click on, then click on the top corresponding tool. Aha! This is the game. So let's see. Hmm. Well, that's not what it needs. Aha! That's right. So I'm guessing pliers. That's right. Okay. Whoop. Oh no no Joe. Go there quite yet. Just while I continue with the game at wait, am I still in the same area? Oh this can get a bit confusing where it moves around on its own. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh songs and calls. This be fascinating. Usual calls. Mm -hmm. Wait, a laughing kookaburra. Haha, <laughs> nice. Mm. Now let's see. Ah, uh, yes, this map here quite clearly shows that this place is shaped like the eyewitness logo. Anyway, let's see. Oh, yes. Hmm. Cybird. Lots of stuff here. 
Ah, yes. Let's have a look at the museum store again, see if that works. We have some images. We can use as a desktop. Some stationery you can print out. Now, will the sounds work? Mm, oh, yep. <laughs> Rainbow lorikeets. King penguin. All right. Uh, you get the idea. So, anything else interesting to look at? Well, there's lots of interesting things here, but it'll take too long to go through it all, so let's just go here. Oh, here's something I find very fascinating. You can use this elevator to switch between games software or whatever. Wait. Chat. Huh. <laughs> right, so remove the bird CD ROM. Ah, yes. Okay, and insert the cat CD ROM. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we're in the cat museum. Go away. As you can see, it's more of the same stuff. There are displays of cats and things relating to cats. Now, let's have a look. Inside a cat. Basic muscles. Oh, this is a bit more interesting. You can x ray certain sections. Visions, I'm curious about this. Uh-huh, cats have highly developed sense. Oh, what cat sees? Ah, that's what I was looking for. Human view. What the? Uh-huh. So, their vision is a bit more focused. But what about nighttime? Hmm? Aha, uh -huh. cats can see more clearly in the dark than humans can. Now what's that there? That ah yes. Well, even the floor has interesting things. Oh. Uh -huh. Behavior room. Cat calls. Fine. And let's have a look at the museum store. Here again, we have desktop images, stationery, and some sounds, which hopefully will not crash this virtual machine. Uh 
Oh. Well, again, you get the idea. There's a lot of interesting stuff here, but anyway, let's go to the elevator. Oh, one last thing. This software came with teachers and parents and teachers' ideas and activities which inspire ways to get the most out of use of it. Like, let's see. Ah, you could, in, could encourage kids to write a guide of the museum, write about your time at the museum. Uh, Mm, oh, the Spectre Museum. You have probably heard of the Phantom of the Opera, but have you heard of the Spectre of the Museum? Rumor has it that the, when the museum is completely empty, a mythical stack stalks silently through the corridors. Children can write a, or tell an adventure story about an account of such a beast. Yes, sometimes... Panther, I think it was, or maybe it was a tiger, appears round the corridors, but it hasn't so far. Anyway, let's go to the elevator to go to somewhere else. Shock. Mm -hmm. Next up, Dinosaur Hunter. Surprisingly, this works. This, this software hadn't come out yet, but this is able to detect that you have installed the dinosaur game. Yeah. Software, eh. Right, as you can see, this one looks very different from the first two. Well, I'll show you this one next time, because that will have to do for now. See you all there. Bye bye for now. and are ideal for watching birds like great tits and blue tits. Learn to take over the functions of other machines, such as telephones, answering machines, televisions, video recorders. Uh, I think it's under the sink, Mom.